it's someone's birthday today. <laughs> Someone is 83 years old. But I'm entering my 84th year. So instead of waiting the whole year to take You're gonna credit. You're going to claim it now? Right now. All right. So I, I don't say I'm 84. I say I am entering my, my 84th, 84th year. year. That's yeah. actually more correct. It is. It is. So in your 20s, you you know, it's you, you're fine because you want to be a little older. And then you get 30 and you start to worry a bit. And then 40, <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you're halfway through. Now, let's see. That, that, and then 50, you're, you're, you have a tendency to want to go back. 60 and 70, you try to ignore. But by the time you hit 80, <sighs> taking credit for Here it. Here I am, world. I just must say that if you've got the, if you've got the courage to grow old, it is the best thing possible. Because you have perspective. You know, I was thinking about oh. your birthday, and I wanted to ask you on camera, you know, so many times in your life you get to a crossroads, and you have a decision to make, and you don't ever know if it's the right decision. So what decisions did you make at different stages in life that were the right decision looking back on it now? There were always mm -hmm. the ones that scared me half to death. I, that I would be like, <gasps> oh my God, what am I doing? Can this I is do crazy. This? Can I do this? I don't know. The first one was decision to move to New York City. Moving to New York in 1950 with 400 bucks in your pocket as a single woman when you can't get your own a bank account or lease in your own name. You know, I didn't even think of it. That's then. big shit, Betty. And I had just turned 20. 20. Uh, Some I, people can't do that now. <laughs> they can't move to New York now at 20. Well, and I was terrified the whole time, but I knew, I knew that's where I wanted to be. I don't know... I would go to all the movies that had scenes of New York, oh, yeah. and I would just, oh, New York City. And I wanted to be a famous fashion illustrator, like the gal that did the art for uh, B. Altman or Lord and Tate. I really liked those artists. <laughs> and I thought that was art. That was the only art I knew. So what was the next big decision? After the next that? big decision after I got to New York was I wanted to go, I wanted to, I wanted to, go to Paris. And that's I, that's a big move to Europe, yeah. And see, then I was twenty six, and I, I got the record, the S. C. Meal record, you know, bonjour, 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 Monsieur <laughs> Dan, bonjour, Dan, you know, Fomo Calivu and Nakiti uh, Pa. I had maybe five or six phrases, and I could kind of count, but I couldn't. I just I'm dyslexic. I couldn't master a language. So but she went anyway. I go anyway. And Do you notice a pattern here? <laughs> <laughs> when I think about it, my heart's like, boom, boom, boom. Uh, Fred came along, and Fred had been married before. So I thought, he must know what, he must know what he's doing. <laughs> he's done it before. And I was 29, about to go over the hill, and he swept me up in this romantic... And he was your patron, and you painted for five years. And what's interesting to me in your life story is those were the years, if you look at your paintings, you become... You're becoming an activist and you don't even know it. Because you're in this marriage, you're not having good sex, you're doing these roles, it doesn't fit, and it's like bubbling up inside yeah, you. I'm painting sex roles. The next big decision was when I knew I wanted to make a segue into, into teaching and I'm now a feminist. So she has her divorce, now she's a feminist, now you're in the movement, now Well, what? I'd read Betty Friedan, and everything she said resonated with me. So Marriage wasn't going to satisfy me. She got rid of all of her furniture. I called apartment. Fred up, and I said, do you want the furniture that you bought? And he said, what do you mean? He said, and I said, I, w I need to empty the living room because I'm going to, uh, to teach. And, he and said, what's great about that, you, you didn't even know you were going to do body sex groups, so at that point... Well, you just I knew, knew no, I was to... going to have groups in, and I was going to teach sex. I had to teach women about sex. But you had no idea what it was going to look like. No, no, no. It, but empty room is what it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so he's all right. He sent a truck. He picked all this furniture up. And the next day, I sat in the middle of an empty room, and I looked around, and I thought, Am I crazy? I'm crazy. No, I was. I had to be crazy. And I, then I said, Why didn't I at least sell it and get some <laughs> money for it? That's so bad. And I'm going, oh, oh, and then all of a sudden I went. And that room was the oh. room that she held her body sex groups for 25 years. And the one we're going to use again. And we're going to use it again for the next three that we have in September, October, and November. I looked at the empty room and I went, I got it. It's a blank, it's a blank canvas and I'm going to paint a new lifestyle. And she did. Whew. So happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. And happy birthday to the rest of the world because you are a treasure. You really are, Betty. Oh, You've changed sweetheart. so many people's lives. She has 
when I posted it on Facebook, so many people were like, Betty changed my sex life. Mm. Mwah. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. I'm going for a hundred. 